It's often said that an Englishman's home is his castle. And today, more and more of us are taking home defence into our own hands with CCTV. I'm recording you through a camera and I'm going to report you to the police. With a two-camera system costing as little as £100, it's never been easier to capture compelling evidence. You've got a camera, because I wanted to catch them. From the criminal to the outrageous. I can't help laughing. Is that the world we live in now? So can you zoom in? You can. 26 cameras, that is a lot, I suppose. Across the country, homeowners are recording extraordinary CCTV footage of brazen burglars. It's like watching a horror film, it's true. Heart-stopping accidents. Oh, it's horrible. And intimidating neighbours. I don't think she's ever going to stop. All from the comfort of their own homes. Ah, we'll get you. Over 350,000 cars are stolen in Britain each year. So it's not surprising that more and more of us are installing CCTV to protect our beloved vehicles. Catching some of the country's cockiest and most persistent thieves red-handed. what doesn't belong to them. I think that's just the day and age that we live in. 30-year-old Nikki's £16,000 Mini Cooper is her most prized possession. I absolutely love this car. I use it for going to business meetings, just taking my daughter to and from school. To protect her pride and joy, Nikki installed two CCTV cameras on the outside of her house. But she had no idea she'd end up starring in her own footage. It was a really, really cold day. As I reversed onto the drive, I left the engine running. I was on my own driveway. It was in broad daylight. I've never watched it all. This is the moment that I could have actually lost my life. As a brazen thief tried to speed off with Nikki's car, she decided to fight back. Despite her bravery, Nikki was knocked unconscious and left in the middle of a busy road. It doesn't feel like it happened to me. It's really weird. I think I've blocked it out of my memory that much. It doesn't feel like me anymore. I had just loads of cuts and bruises, head injury. The tendon was ripped off my bone on my finger. Nikki's car was found abandoned the following day. But the bold carjacker escaped. If we had had CCTV at a lower level, we would have captured his face. So we're going to put more CCTV on the front and then some on the back as well. I'm scared what the world's going to be like when my daughter's old, Anne. It's not just criminals we're catching on camera. We're also keeping a watchful eye on poor customer service from careless bin men to postmen cutting corners. Some of us are even turning detective ourselves, using cameras to crack mysterious local crimes. 
With a population of only 4,000, the market town of Brampton is in one of the safest counties in the UK. However, this sleepy neighbourhood had a curious case of car vandalism to contend with. Retired psychologist Anne has been a resident for 12 years. The first time I noticed it um, was somebody knocked on the door and told me I had a flat tyre. And then about three weeks later, there was another one. And then another one. It looked like somebody had taken a screwdriver to it. So I'd, I'd do all four. I felt a bit like, you know, the armed forces in Ireland, how they used to go around and check cars. Then I heard Tom and Helen down the road had had a couple of punctured tyres. We seem to get punctures a bit too frequently, really. We just considered it to be bad luck at the time. Was somebody targeting me? And I got really wound up about it. Looking out the window every five minutes, hardly sleeping. Determined to catch the culprit, Anne invested in a one-camera CCTV system. You're supposed to mount it on a wall, but we didn't want it to be too obvious, because I wanted to catch them. And it was, ah, we'll get you. You could watch it live, or you could play it back. Tom and I were doing shifts on it. And she would just bring me cups of tea, and I'd just watch this thing for ages, <laughs> waiting for something to happen. You could go through it, speed it up. But that, that didn't show up anything. So you slow it down a bit, and still nothing. What was I seeing? Lots of cars going by in the head of a pedestrian. Every so often, a dog going by investigating the car and moving off. And I kept saying to Anne that it's got to be on here somewhere. We'd spend the whole day looking at it. It just consumes you. And you get bog-eyed. And I kept dropping off to sleep and I didn't know how much I'd seen and oh. On the one hand, you think, well, they're really very determined and clandestine operative. <laughs> probably because they're ducking underneath the camera somehow and doing it. Did they have some form of blocking device? I watched too many films. It makes you very, very neurotic. I'll be walking the dog and I'll be looking at people thinking, is it you? It could have tipped me over the edge. With no potential suspects, Anne decided to go to the police. PC Amos had the gruelling task of looking through hours of footage. I watched all the way until the morning, by about five o'clock in the morning. You could see that the tyre was flat. No person was anywhere near that vehicle. So I'm sat watching it, I think about eight times. And I just happened to see a black and white object. I thought, I need to show this to Mrs. Taylor. I came downstairs and said, come and see, you won't believe it. Well, I'd gone through months and months of, of this, and, and it, it was a dog. Well, I just couldn't believe it. I think she's having a really good chew there. It was just totally outrageous. Jess, I think it, the dog's name was. Jess the dog. Jess the dog. So, Jess walks along here every day off the lead. She got very excited, and that's when the damage happened to the tyres. And what was your first reaction when you heard Jane? Oh, absolute mortification. Yes. With cameras up and down the country rolling 24-7, more and more of us are being filmed when we least expect it. It's the camera.
camera owners themselves who get more than they bargained for. Just careful. Mum of three, Lauren, installed two cameras to help solve a messy problem on her doorstep. When I'd come out first thing in the morning, always there'd be um, dog poo outside our front door. This whole area would often just be, you know, just one big pile of poo, really. Lauren and her husband, Matthew, didn't have to wait long to spot the offender. So this is him now walking with his dog. He lets his dog poo outside the gate and he just walks off and leaves the poo there. A couple of nights later, we, yeah, he walked past. Walk past. When I collared him, he said sorry and stuff and he picked it up. It's and yeah, that hasn't happened since. Problem solved. But nothing could prepare the couple for the far more shocking events their CCTV would capture next. I find it hard to talk about it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. It's horrible. I don't think I'll ever forget about it now, to be honest. I think it'll always be there in the back of our mind now. So I set off out through the gate and Lucy was following behind. She was just going to walk out and come to me as she does or as she has always done. just dragged her about 10 foot across the pavement. Oh, it's horrible. Her face was just covered in blood. She needed to go to the hospital. It was just traumatic, wasn't it? With police looking for the cyclist, Lauren and Matthew's CCTV footage went viral. The Nationals got hold of the story. Oh, look, here it is. These are obviously the, the images of the CCTV. I mean, I never thought it would end up like this, you know, with all the nationals and things like that. It's just escalated and escalated and escalated, and it's just gone crazy. But without the CCTV, it would have been his version of events against our version of events then, you see. But the evidence is there, and it can't be disputed. It genuinely looks like I've just gone straight through. Everyone's saying it's a hit and run, really. And just think, if, it, if the view, the viewfinder of the camera was just a, two metres wider, it would be showing everything. Across Britain, Thousands of us are turning to CCTV to secure our properties. With cameras in place, you are five times less likely to get burgled. But there's always someone who'll have a go. In Liverpool, 51-year-old Bobby was forced to consider CCTV after a break-in. Well, it was just a normal day. When I saw that the shed door was open, I obviously knew someone's been in the garden then. Tools had gone, one of the bikes stolen, and obviously reported it to the police, that kind of thing. But again, what can the police do? Since the burglary, Bobby has installed a total of six cameras, both in and outside his house. This one is the the pan and zoom camera this one will pan right down to right down this street this one here is in the gym this one's on the drive back door because obviously we have the cars parked there and this one's onto the back gate and the shed i think it's got a provision for eight cameras um, so we've got room for two more over the course of seven days bobby's system records over a thousand hours of footage once a week, he reviews what's been captured. It shows if there's been anything happening by these little tiny red dots. I mean, something's moved in the area. Yeah, that's just me. If something's happened or you think something's happened, you find yourself spending a long time going through it, watching every person that walks past to see why were they in the street? 
Why were they in this area? Were they targeting me? And I think it's only the same as watching TV. Little did Bobby know, his CCTV would capture the most outrageous crime his street has ever seen. Monday morning, I get up, and as I'm going past my next door neighbour's house going to work, I noticed, noticed most of his turf had gone. So that evening, I checked on the CCTV, and I was, I was gobsmacked. I can't help laughing, I know it's not funny. Five o'clock in the morning, an old lady with obviously a young girl, with two prams and start unrolling my neighbour's turf. How ridiculous is that? And they're just dragging it off, carting it back into the pram, back again. Unbelievable. It's kind of funny and kind of sad at the same time, isn't it? Is that the world we live in now? Thanks to Bobby's footage, the lady was convicted of theft and sentenced to three months in prison. Today's home CCTV footage is easy to upload and share, and it doesn't take long for clips of astonishing behaviour to go viral. For some, this footage can change their lives. 23-year-old Andrew was caught on CCTV when he hit a three-year-old girl while cycling to work. I hate watching it. It's horrible, the fact that the little girl gets hit. Although the camera provided one view of the scene, for Andrew, there is more to the story than meets the eye. The roads were really busy. I was using the cycling lane, and there's cars jam-packed all the way down on both sides. And I took a silly decision to cycle on the pavement because I thought it'd be safer. I saw a lady walk out in front of me, so I slowed down. I looked down, it was just like, just a little girl there. I tried to correct and I slammed on my brakes. The CCTV doesn't show anything after that. It doesn't show me come off straight open handlebars. It doesn't show me worried about the little girl. It's like, how badly is she hurt? How badly did I hurt her? As they were leaving, I, I turned around and walked away. And the day after it was on the TV, and then the day after that, I had reporters camping outside my house. I had people telling me they were going to be looking for me. I was terrified to go outside. Whenever someone looks at you on the street, it's just like, do they know? I think if you film somebody, you should have their permission to use that before you put it anywhere else. People like yourselves that are fil filming me now have to have my permission to use this. We didn't expect it to go this far, and now we don't know what sort of outcome we're going to get. Within one week, the CCTV had 800,000 views. I've been on YouTube looking for all the videos, trying to get them removed. Saying I could have killed her, he should be ashamed of himself, he needs to, he needs to go die. It's horrible. Andrew pleaded guilty to dangerous cycling and was fined £829. CCTV is used by police and councils to keep our streets safe and deter crime. Now, with homeowners getting in on the act, the industry is booming. Cameras can be bought on the high street, online, or through specialist companies. It's a trend now where a few years ago it was just targeted that no disrespect, only, only rich people would have them, or well, now, no, you know, everybody's having them. Mick has had his security installation company for 10 years. And there's an example there, our local police station is just here, just being closed down, you know. The police are quite stretched, hence why they're promoting people to have their own systems here and, you know, perhaps get the prosecutions they want. Mick's first customer today is Ricky from Essex. Rick, yeah, good, thanks. After his jewellery business was recently attacked, he's decided to install cameras in his family home. This is what the cameras picked up. Three men 
with machetes and hammers trying to break the window where the Rolex watches and the diamonds are. Being in the jewellery trade, I just worry that people might follow me home and do something similar here. I'm more worried about my home because it's where my wife and children are. I'd rather not have to have it. It'd be nice if you could have your front door unlocked, but you can't, so. Ricky's wife, Kirsty, has a very clear idea of what she wants. I think one in this corner here, one up there, and another one down that side. I would be tempted to put the camera on the right-hand corner of the house up at the top there. Yeah. We've been busy for over a year now. We're normally really busy coming up to Christmas, but, you know, this year we've gone right through. The cost of the new system will be over a thousand pounds and will take five hours to install. For a house, this is quite a big job. You don't usually have four cameras in a the house. They usually just want one front and one back. But if you've got four, you're literally covering every part of the property. That's it. Okay, just drop it a tad. A bit more to your right. That's fine. You happy with the image quality? Yeah. So can you zoom in? You can. But obviously, it's a little bit intrusive for your neighbours. You can see quite a bit of their property. Yeah. I reckon we might need another two cameras. Do you think so? Yeah. They could walk onto our roof and break into that window. That's what I, do you see what I mean? Really pleased. I did want one in the hallway, but Ricky talked me out of it. <laughs> it seems like it might be one of them things that are a little bit addictive, and you think, oh, I can cover this and cover this and cover that. As you see yourself with extra cameras already being spoke about now, it evolves. It always will evolve and people will always want more cameras. But if you can't feel safe in your own home, you know, whatever makes you feel safe, then that's what you've got to do. While most CCTV cameras keep a watchful eye outside our properties, indoors the lens is catching some of our more mischievous family members up to no good. However, for some people, CCTV is a way of life. Basically, if I press it up within five, ten minutes, the police can get here. That's your other one, the GPS one. This one, I take out, if we was to go out, if Thanks. I feel threatened in any way, I've got to just press this. And again, the police could find me. Mm. This is really just like an extension of my CCTV cameras. Mavis and Alan have lived on the same cul-de-sac in Lancashire since they married 24 years ago. But their idyllic retirement was shattered when a new neighbour moved in next door. One morning, my side wall was a different colour to the house. Anyway, I went round and I just said, I hope you don't mind me asking, but have you painted my house? And she said, yes. So I said, I'm sorry, I said, but you're going to have to paint it back. It looks awful. And she said, make me. And that's when things started happening. Banging on the walls at night. Shouting abuse over the fence at the back. There's toilet we rolls thrown at the windows. She can just go for no reason. And we don't know why. Eventually, the police advised Mavis and Alan to start gathering evidence by installing CCTV. <sighs> that's the one on the front. That's the side. Then we've got the one down the garden. Over a four-year period, the CCTV captured their neighbours' increasingly disturbing behaviour. Oi, Ward, I'm watching you, lady. I know a lot about you. A lot. I be warned. Bear that in mind. Or else we'll be trouble. To date, Mavis has collected nearly 70 hours of footage. See, what's this one? This looks like it could be a good one. In a minute, you'll hear the hose pipe on my window. She don't like CCTV. She's trying to aim at the cameras. Mavis and Alan's lives have become consumed by monitoring their CCTV cameras and collecting evidence but the cameras didn't stop their neighbour. 
We, you can't really believe what is happening. It doesn't seem real. There's the banging at the windows. Yeah, you, yes. You're the most evil couple I've ever met. It just throws you in a, a panic. What will I have you? You come outside and face me. It's not nice being spied upon, is it? Eh, uh, being watched all the time, you freak. It's all you can do because you're full of poison. You're full of poison, you two. It's been 14 years. It's been horrendous. You're like a prisoner in your own home. I'll be back. Britain has an estimated 6 million CCTV cameras and they're turning many of us into accidental nature photographers. But unfortunately, it's usually human nature we need to keep an eye on. Barron Road in Blackpool may be one of the most watched streets in Britain. There are 26 CCTV cameras. And 11 of them belong to Jackie. Nobody can walk down here without one of us seeing them. If someone's coming up the road here, you can follow them there to there. And then it goes along to this one. And then they come round the corner past this one and then past that one, and then past that one in a continuous line. So I can't blip out. <laughs> I was the first person in the street to get CCTV. Then Leslie did. This is Leslie's, that's her front door's there. We've got three here. And the top one is now covering the whole of this junction. You tend to find that some cars don't stop. Well, there's quite a few accidents. Just 20 metres down the road, there are even more cameras. I've only got seven cameras. There's one up there, but that gets my front door. And then there's one that points to where the cars park on the road just outside the house. And the one that's really clever is that one. There are 624 hours of daily life being recorded in this street every day. But one shocking incident was to see the residents drawing on their collective of cameras to uncover the truth. I opened the front door to be met by my neighbour Craig with our kitten in his hands. He just died having been mauled to death by this dog. I was absolutely heartbroken. It was horrible because he was a member of the family. Arriving on the scene is a young woman who claims her dog lost control and attacked the kitten. The story was our kitten ran out in front of the dog and what happened? I didn't happened? have time to do anything because it just all happened so quickly. The cat appeared from nowhere and she seemed genuine. More importantly, everyone believed her. But it was when Craig started talking about what he'd witnessed, alarm bells started ringing really, I think. You don't forget things like that. Came down the road and I could just see a lady standing outside of Jackie's and a dog. I stopped there, I just jumped out of the car. Like I said, I don't even think I put the handbrake on because I was in that much of a hurry to actually stop what was happening. Took the dog by the collar. It was really easy, it didn't try to stop me taking it, it didn't growl at me, it didn't bark or nothing. Leslie came and knocked on my door and she was shaking and she said, can you look at your footage? Because, um, Reggie's been killed and that, so I wound it back immediately. I couldn't believe what I was watching. It was just pure evil. It's like watching a, a nightmare, like a horror film that's true. She knew what she was doing, because she was constantly looking around. 
but she was smiling, she seemed to be laughing. She was winding the dog up as if it was some sort of game. It's not like it even happened in a split second, as she said. He was subjected to seven minutes of torture, really. The footage led to a prosecution, and the woman was found guilty of causing an animal to fight and causing unnecessary suffering to an animal. She was given an 18-month suspended sentence. I think cameras are starting to become a, a bit like a mobile phone, and with time, everybody will have cameras of some description on their property. The camera doesn't lie, it's as simple as that. Despite an abundance of cameras on our streets, there's still no deterring some. CCTV's not necessarily popular with our neighbours either. But retired couple Mavis and Alan feel their cameras are a necessity. They've spent years collecting CCTV evidence against their neighbour, who they feel has terrorised them for over a decade. And it has finally paid off. This is um, restraining orders for four years, and it's not to communicate with Mavis or Alan Ward and not to enter the curtilage of our property. With the court order in place, Mavis wants to get back to normal life. Today, she's planning to mow the lawn something she rarely does on her own. We have to put this on just to see if it's clear so I can go out. Sometimes I get up there and she'll come out of the house. I don't know what she's going to do. She's unpredictable. She's asked Alan to keep a watchful eye through their cameras. She might be still out there, I don't know. I've got to go out. I, I'm not just going to let her bully me. Let's hope this restraining order's working. She's come back out next door, she's behind the trees. You can see her, and I can feel my blood pressure going up. <laughs> Me. She's there now. And all this water here on the floor is where she's just coming through. Although Mavis feels the behaviour is intentional, the terms of the restraining order haven't been breached. She'll just say, well, she was watering her trees. But this equipment, it's an absolute godsend, isn't it? Well, it is, and that there's no police to actually monitor the area like there used to be. Hopefully one day we won't have to keep doing this. Well, no, but I still wouldn't get rid of the cameras. I think every house should have them, and I think they should be built into the house when the houses are built. Most private surveillance cameras are concentrated in towns and cities where crime is rife. But in some cases, homeowners have recorded strange goings-on, even in the most seemingly idyllic of settings. Just so peaceful, just so peaceful and wonderful. Look at that view, it's just fantastic. Everybody who has visited me, every one of them has said to me, God, you're so lucky to live up here. It is so peaceful and quiet. And I've always thought, God, if only you knew what is gonna happen the minute you leave. When she retired 15 years ago, 54-year-old Mandy bought a nine-acre farm deep in the heart of the Yorkshire Moors. I just wanted a quiet life and I, I just, as soon as I came here, I thought, this is it, I've got to feel about it. I was told by the estate agent that a little old man lived in a cottage down the track 
and, I mean, he was friendly to start with. A few months after moving in, Mandy decided to put up a gate to stop her animals escaping. It was kind of as soon as this gate was put on that the harassment just started. He'd follow me around just staring. Everything I did, his eyes would be on me. All the time, just staring at me, every minute of every day. He started coming up much closer to the house. It was relentless, day in, day out. One day, I was walking down the track with my dogs. When I got to the gate, I just happened to glance across and he was out in the field. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. After being stalked by her neighbour, 54-year-old Mandy turned to covert cameras to help her collect evidence. This is the little mini cam that I used to get all the video evidence on. This was the only hope of catching him. What I used to do was switch it on in here and then I would go out and just carry on with my normal business as usual. This was the um, place, you see, where we could get the camera angled at where he was standing. And then whilst I was undoing the padlock, I would just clip it. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. He was actually exposing himself. I just thought, he never. I couldn't believe it. And I was really shocked. I mean, I was obviously hoping it was just a one-off. But, oh, God, no. It became relentless. I was just feeling stress. Your stomach is churning constantly. You're just feeling absolutely dreadful. It's absolutely awful just to have these eyes on you all the time. He really ruled my life. My life was unbearable. I mean, I couldn't look at him, but I always used to have like a bit of a smirk inside, thinking, ah, go on, keep doing it. You don't know what I'm doing to you. I just thought, yeah, go on, perform away. Mandy's neighbour was sentenced to five years in jail for harassment and exposure. But when the sentence is complete, he'll be allowed to move back home. Even though he's not here, every single day of my life is still consumed with him. The time is very quickly coming where he's going to be stood back out there. Even though Mandy's CCTV put her neighbour in jail, she has decided to move away. In some cases, like Mandy's, CCTV has its limitations. But when criminals strike inside the home, it can be invaluable. Maybe you'll think of me. That's so different. Gosh, she can see how much weight she's lost. She's really not the same person, does she? Remember how she was? Yeah. Jane and Diane's mum, Helen, is 80 years old and has Parkinson's disease. The sisters noticed things were going missing from their mother's home and were desperate to find out what was going on. She probably had carers for maybe a couple of months, maybe? Yeah, it was very early on yeah. and we noticed there was jewellery <coughs> missing. 
We did involve the police at that stage, didn't we? They couldn't do anything about it, really. They took statements. You're just powerless, you know. And at this point, we had had a couple of consecutive weeks, didn't we, with large amounts of money going missing out of Mum's purse. Yeah, you're talking £150. That's when we said, right, someone's, coming, someone's in. coming in the house. We're going to get the camera in. Diane's son, Adam, suggested they install a covert camera. It's actually a camera that farmers would use to keep track on cattle or stop intruders. We wanted to just get some kind of evidence. It's a bit like we're spying on her. One evening, as Helen went up to bed, everything became clear. And, um, mm. sorry. Man, it was just horrible. Mm. Seeing actual footage it did make me feel physically yeah, sick. That was the very first carer that Mum had had. The former carer, who worked for Helen in September 2014, had copied a key and for months had been letting herself in while Helen slept. It had just kind of all started falling into place. Yes, just going, oh exactly. my goodness. The family passed the footage to the police and the carer was found guilty of burglary and jailed for three years. It's amazing what a thief will try and steal when you aren't looking. From garden gnomes to safety deposit boxes to dogs, two mobility scooters. But advances in camera technology mean that soon there may be nowhere to hide. There's something on it flashing, actually. I'm probably recording myself. I'm not 100% how this fits. Ah, that must be it. For the last 14 years, Mavis and Alan have felt terrorised by their neighbour. Yeah, you. You come outside and stay... Although they already have 24-hour CCTV in operation in their home, Mavis feels she needs to put herself under surveillance. It must be working. So if I... You've got a green light. I know side. I have. Right. I haven't got the right clothes on, really, have I? She's hired a body camera. And he's just come round under you. The same model used by the police. OK, OK. I'm not pretty bra. Did you hear what he just said? He said it's like putting your bra on. Doesn't go with me dress, does it? But, ugh. Now, I'd be watching. Do you want me to put this on? Because I'd be watching. Yeah, you could that, do. Yeah. Does it look like the lens is on you, Alan? Yeah. yeah. Mavis is desperate to get her independence back and until now has been too anxious to walk past her neighbours alone. Today, she's planning to post a letter. When was the last time you did this on your own? Oh, God. Long, long time ago. Yeah, it could be a few Three years, years ago. Yeah. He probably don't want me to do it, but I do. Mm. I do. OK, I won't be a minute. Go. A bit uh, nervous. You never know what's going to happen. It's hard. <laughs> She's come back. Still a bit wary. Oh, no. So you're coming on in the road. I've achieved something. Yeah, you have. It's a long time since you've been round there in your own. I know it's stupid, really, isn't it? Next day or so, mm. 
We'll go for a walk. We'll do that. It's nice to be able to have a walk, isn't it? I can't remember the last time we went for a walk. It was a few years ago. Yeah. Do you feel a bit more confident? Yeah.